No, no, no. He's not trying to kill you like eat you, but he is trying to kill you with his diseases. <laughs> Look at him, and his face Look, is Look, he's a got an crooked. evil smile. He does. He has like a crooked face like that Oscar that we just got. Like what is going on guys well we are back for another video today and today what we're going to be doing is we are actually going to be putting in one of the fish that we have into a new tank in my last video where i talked about picking up the new red pike somebody commented and said what a beautiful fish to end up in a tub and you know what I have to I have to agree with that it is such a pretty fish it's actually a pretty expensive fish and he deserves or she deserves a home just like all the other fish in uh, my tanks and I've provided decent tanks for everybody else so it's time to provide this fish a tank as well so let's see what we're gonna do with this so we're gonna start with this massive tank right here well um, I say it's massive it's not massive it's like 65 gallons but still it's a decent sized tank for this fish to start out in and we're going to scape this thing out with some some red substrate which I've never used the red substrate before but this is volcanic rock I believe or clay rock or something it is a planted substrate so we're gonna use some of that we are going to use some dragonstone obviously some Fritz products we're gonna use different types of driftwood we have some of this we have some plants we also have this piece of driftwood which we're gonna put in there so we have a lot of different things that we're gonna be actually putting into this tank I mean let's get into it it's gonna be a pretty uh pretty lengthy build but we'll run some time lapses and things like that and we're gonna start with the first thing that I always do with a substrate especially the planted substrate is you have to wash it so we're gonna take the five gallon bucket of substrate outside we're gonna grab the hose wash that off we're gonna wash off the dragon Dragonstone and everything else. So let's get to this. All right, we got our Dragonstone in here. This is just in a styrofoam box. So we're just gonna fill this up with water, let it overflow and... All right, so we're gonna wash the Dragonstone off here. This stuff gets pretty dirty because of where it comes from. Down inside these holes. Just get it all completely rinsed out because we don't want all that dirt in our tank. So this stuff is pretty good and rinsed off. We're gonna put it back in this white tub, run some water over it and see how much dirt's left in it. All right, and as you can see, the water's staying pretty clear, so we're good there. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and fill this thing up, let it soak in case there's any dirt up in the crevices, and then we'll move over to the substrate. And as you've seen in many of my videos, I always wash the substrate directly in a bucket because of how dirty it is. And as you can see, there is nothing different about this red substrate. I mean, this stuff is filthy dirty. All right, we're gonna continue washing this, so stay tuned. All right, I have the substrate washed. I have the Dragonstone washed. We're gonna get this substrate into the tank to start with. So with my paint brush, I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot other than just smoothing this out and getting it even. And then we'll build up where we wanna build up here in just a little bit. But right now, I just wanna make sure I have enough substrate to cover the bottom. And then we will start scaping. Now let's look at the overall scape of what we're gonna to wanna to do. All right, so this is the start of the hardscape, and it's just a little bit of dragonstone and some driftwood. And then we'll incorporate this driftwood in here, something about like that. Let's get the substrate where we need it and get this thing together. And one of the things that I don't normally add in my tanks are air stones, but today I'm gonna add an air stone actually up underneath this scape, just because it's a bigger tank and I'm only gonna have one filter in here on one side. This air stone will be placed right up underneath all of this. So let's see how this goes. Now for plants. Now I have in here a little bit of veil, which I'm not sure which one this is. It may be jungle, maybe, you know, I really don't know. But we're gonna get that in there. I have a few sets of wisteria, which you've seen those in some of my tanks. And then this, I don't remember what this is called, but this actually comes in red and green. This is all green. I didn't get any of the red just simply because of all the red rock that's in here. But I have this in the back of my blackwater tank. So yeah, let's get all this put in here and then we'll get some water in it. All right, guys. Well, we are, <laughs> we're back. I, um, I had to finish the planting on my own. Really, I needed to fill the tank up with some water for the plants to float for me to really get the visualization of where they were supposed to be placed and what I wanted to look like. And usually what I do 
When I have a substrate like that, I'll use a bucket like this and I'll place the end of the hose in the bucket and let water run into the bucket and then overflow out of the bucket into the tank because it helps prevent the substrate from being disturbed, releasing all of that dust and everything that's left in there. Well, in my infinite wisdom, I wasn't paying attention and the bucket fell over, the hose hit the substrate and literally it was so cloudy you couldn't even see anything in the tank. So I had to drain it, get everything back to where I needed it to. And by that point, I already had the plants placed and I just went ahead and filled it up with water. So I'm gonna show you the tank now. It is missing the big piece of driftwood and that's just simply because I haven't gotten it fully soaked yet, but I'll show you kind of where it's gonna go in the tank here in just a moment. But yeah, let's take a look at this tank. Okay, so what we have in here is we have some wisteria back over here in the corner. Now the piece of driftwood is actually gonna be sitting kind of up into here. We have this piece of driftwood, this piece of wood over here. Those don't need to soak just simply because those don't release tannins. We have some of the dragonstone down here. We have some of the veil. I think this is jungle veil actually. And then some more wisteria back here. I'm probably gonna place some rocks down in the bottom just a little bit, but I gotta get this substrate back normal because it's not quite where I want it to look. But overall, I like the scape of the tank. Also, another thing is, if you run an aerator, which I do, I put the air stone in here and hook the hose up. Another problem I had, which I completely wasn't paying attention, is I didn't have a check valve on my hose when I placed it in there. So the water from the tank also flooded the all over the floor because I wasn't paying attention. So make sure you pay attention and make sure that you use a check valve on your air hose or otherwise it could flood your house. Well, we took a break from building our fish tank to come to Home Depot with Brenton because we're gonna build a, what are we building, Brenton? I don't know. We're gonna build a goat jungle gym today. And um, yeah, because, well, goats need enrichment too. Wait, really, Charlie? Really, you just had to start up the forklift right now? Never listens. Anyway, we're gonna build a goat jungle gym because goats need some enrichment. So let's get into this. Well, we went ahead and picked up some 70% off lumber because who needs straight lumber when you're building a jungle gym for goats? Not me, said the fleet. Well, we're finished at the Home Depot. We got all of our stuff. We're gonna throw this stuff in the back of the car. Ah! Whoa, that was loud. Thanks. Sorry, right. my bad. It's okay. Are you a mulch thrower? Yeah. All right. That was impressive. Oh, thank you. Nothing like building something for mini goats to climb on because you got mini goats and other people don't have mini goats and they like to climb because they're weird and they're not very smart and they're tiny and they have really small brains because they like to climb, so we're building something for them to climb on. Not to mention they eat everything. That too, and did I also mention that they like to climb on stuff until we're building them a climbing thing from Home Depot? I do believe you uh, mentioned that. I also might not have mentioned that they're mini goats and they like to climb on a bunch of stuff because they got small brains. How small are their brains? Well, a little bit bigger than mine, so pretty small. That's real small. As you notice, I'm sitting here working the camera as Brenton is doing all the hard labor. Hey Brenton, hold that wood and let me hear you yeet. That's a good yeet. Oh, that was good. That was bad. That was real bad. Launch it. Launch it. Just launch it. I got a little bit of whiplash. That was good. Just ram it in there, Brenton. Yeah, just, there you go. Hey, hey buddy. So we started with building a new tank for the pike and then we went into building a jungle gym for the goats. And now, now, Britain is getting COVID-19 from the source. You like the watch? No. Yeah, and now he has COVID-19 on his watch. <laughs> as you can see with the social distancing. Oh, look at that. And it just, uh, that's good. That's good. This is what a small baby hippo looks like, people. Like, why does he have no hair? <laughs> he's a skinny pig. He's a skinny pig. <laughs> that's what he's called. A skinny pig? Yeah. Hey, but who around here do you know is a skinny pig? I don't have a skinny pig. I do. Christian has a skinny pig. <laughs> All right, well, we're back with, uh, you know, the fishing here, and we got done with the, the baby hippopotamus and the baby uh, opossum and the building of stuff and everything else you just saw. So now we're back to the fish. So I'm about to move the pike from the indoor pond into its new home. But before we do that, 
we have to treat the water because I have not treated the water yet. So we're gonna be using some Fritz Complete and we're gonna use some Turbo Start. So to start with, this being a 60 gallon tank, I need a full cap full plus a little bit more to treat all 60 gallons. So the Fritz Complete is now in, let's add some Turbo Start. All right, so we got the Fritz Turbo Start. This is live nitrifying bacteria and it requires that you add fish immediately or that you ghost feed your tank. It does not, however, instantly cycle your tank to the point where you can fully stock it, You, but you do have to add a fish. So adding one fish is fine. Oh. And there it goes. All that nitrifying bacteria just eating up all of the ammonia. Okay, now live nitrifying bacteria must go back into the refrigerator. All right, it's time to get the pipe out of the indoor pond. And here he is. And here we go. Come on. Oh gosh, we gotta hurry. We gotta hurry. We gotta hurry. Oh gosh, here we go. Fish on! Oh, oh, oh. Fish on! Oh! Oh, here he goes. Oh. oh. Calm down. Calm. He's fighting like a pike. You'd think that we like actually caught him on a hook. Oh, mean? there he goes. I was just trying to pull the tank. What are you doing? I was putting a spike in there. Look at him. Look how pretty he is. Oh, yeah. Eat your heart out, Tony Mustache. That's a pike. Wow. I'm trying to get on best video. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now that is a beautiful specimen of a fish. Yeah, you just barged in the fish really loud. <laughs> Sorry. Just trying to fill in the tank. <laughs> I mean, like he was fighting like he was on the end of a hook. We just caught that pike out of the pond out back. You know, he's a tropical pike, but. At least he moves around. He does. He's a good looking fish, I'll tell you that. I mean, he's a real good looking fish. Well, let's get some food in here for him. Now, we'll tell you before I drop this food in there, it is a very good chance that he will not eat because he was just transported and is probably kind of stressed out. So, this particular pike, he's not red as you see in pictures of a red pike. And that is, is because the red color actually comes from their diet, very much like flamingos. Shut up, <laughs> Anyway, so Rod's food, which is what I'm using to feed this guy, is this is a freshwater largemouth blend. It's actually for predator fish, and it has the orange colors added to it, which is essentially beta carotene. Same thing you find in carrots. So we're gonna give him some of this. All right, so I'm just gonna plop this food out for this guy, see if he'll come get any of it. He may not, but we'll see. All right, so we have some food in there for him. Let's see if he'll eat it. Yeah, he's not eating right now, but he'll he'll get there. All right, guys. Well, with that being said, we hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you have not subscribed, actually, hold on. I think Max Robert wants to tell us about something. If you haven't subscribed to our channel and follow us on Instagram, do that now. I hope you liked this video today. <laughs> Look at that. Appreciate it, Max. What do you want to do this week with COVID-19 quarantine? Jump on the trampoline? Yeah. You want to go fishing? Sure. <laughs> Here we go fishing. All right. Well, we good. might go fishing tomorrow. Yeah. Well, tell uh, everybody bye. Well, like little Max said, if you have not subscribed to our... Ow. Oh, wow. I just stepped on a pine cone. That hurt. If you have not subscribed to our channel or have not followed us on Instagram, please do that now. We really appreciate the support. Also, if you want to cop you some fish room merch, you can pick that up at... TheFanaticBrain.com. That's right. But with all that... Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like it before you go. You subscribe. And hey, we will see you next time.